Healthcare reform can seem to be, to many, an overwhelming topic. There's hundreds of thousands of pages of legislation out there you know, in each state. Um, there's new information every day. It's changing a lot. And, and we're in this business every day, but it's almost too much at times. Healthcare in the United States and how we f pay for healthcare is very convoluted and very difficult to fully understand. And at the, I guess at the root, when you think about the way we pay for it today, businesses in the, in the, across the country uh, subsidize the cost of uh, uncompensated care. So the reason healthcare is so expensive in the United States is because we pay providers on a per unit of service basis and we have a strong sense of competition in our market. The problem with that is it encourages more services. And in the United States, we pay twice per person as other developed countries, such as France, and yet, if you look at us across the world, we rank only 37th in the world in terms of our health outcomes. The big issue right now is affordability and quality. And I think if we don't get our arms around that as an industry, there's a lot of bad things that'll happen from that. I think what healthcare reform has done though is it gives us a platform to address those things um, and, and, and make some real progress as an industry collectively on the cost, the affordability and the quality issues that, that, that we have right now. Healthcare costs in our country for a family of four average of over $12,000 a year. If you're making about 30,000 and supporting a family, that's over a thousand dollars a month in costs. It's simply unaffordable. So in today's world, we have tens of millions of Americans who don't have insurance. And per the Affordable Care Act, they're supposed to have insurance. If those individuals don't have insurance in the future state world, no matter whether those are Medicaid patients or commercially insured patients, then somebody's gonna pay for the services rendered to the individuals who come in the doors and don't have the way to pay for services. And the individuals that are gonna pay for that are gonna be me, you, businesses across Missouri, and here right here in St. Louis. That's how it's gonna happen. As a not-for-profit hospital, we can't turn folks away. We take care of people when they show up for care. Well, when we provide lots of free care, that care gets cost-shifted to others in society. And I think what society is saying is we can't continue to pay for it that way. And I, I would agree with that. The primary source of health care today for the uninsured is the emergency room. It's the most expensive place you can get care. It is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You will see a physician and you will incur very expensive tests. But imagine a situation, which is where we are trying to go, wherein these individuals could access care earlier on. And so perhaps we could avoid a catastrophic need to go to the emergency room because we took care of a chronic condition before the attack happened. In a future state world, we're gonna move away from that. We're gonna to move to a world where providers are paid to keep people healthy. That will be a significant influencing factor in how we drive healthcare costs down. There is an entire timeline that spans between 2011 and 2019 with varying components of this health care reform law taking effect. The biggest change for health care reform probably occurs in 2014. So we've already implemented a number of provisions in 2010, 2011, 2012, but 2014 is the biggest change. And it's the biggest change in terms of the impact on rates, the impact on coverage, and employers making decisions about their benefits. I think it really comes back to, um, you know, the employer has two options, whether to continue to offer benefits as they do today, or um, uh, eliminate that plan and have their employees buy from the exchange. I think a lot of that's driven by what the business strategy is and how an employer's human resources strategy supports that. For individuals who don't access health insurance through their employer, they'll have the option of accessing health insurance through the exchanges. And the exchanges are the equivalent of the Amazon.com of shopping, if you will. So in today's marketplace, it sometimes can be difficult to shop as an individual for a health insurance policy. In the future state world of exchanges, that'll be much easier. You'll have a vast array of choices available to you on the internet 
from the minimally priced plans all the way up to Cadillac priced plans for those individuals who want to shop and compare against different options. It'll be a great way for people to access health insurance. So we're talking about a new distribution channel in the market. We're talking about a new way for people to buy insurance. And you got to remember, there's going to be a lot of people looking to buy insurance that have never been in the market before. So they're going to have a lot of questions. They're going to have a lot of needs to help them make that decision. So, you know, the challenge we have is how are we as an industry going to be ready for the, the, the needs that potentially are going to be there. So when you think about it, 80 million people are going to be switching coverage in 2014. We could have 30 million people who are uninsured today become insured in 2014. We might have 15 million people who are eligible for Medicaid that have not been eligible in the past. We may have 20 million people who get their coverage through exchanges, that, and that has not even been an option in the past. The consumer will become more front and center. And so from a, a delivery perspective, from a health insurance services perspective, I think we're going to have to organize ourselves around that consumer and what does the consumer value and, and really meeting them on their terms with regards to access to care, access to services, access to different tools that they can use to help them uh, you know, be healthier, manage chronic conditions, and really make informed decisions about, you know, where they go to get care, who treats them, what insurance carrier is going to meet their needs. If you think about RBC, we have a number of people who have a perspective on this. We have law firms, we have accounting firms, we have benefit consultants, hospitals, health plans. So really check out what's out there, what's available in terms of information, and then make the right decision for your organization. Everybody's concerned about how this gets funded and how it gets paid for. I don't think there's any question about that. I think the, the, at the end of the day, what we, what we appreciate is that we gotta begin to change the way we provide healthcare as a, as a country. I've said before that healthcare reform does not start and will not end with this one law. It's gonna continue into the future. So what direction is the country gonna go as a result of this? That's really the long-term impact.